finally, after two weeks of working on the Summer Fiesta missions, it feels like we're at a point where it is doable to complete the remaining objectives today. We have five to do. We need a Light Fur Type Moose, a Chocolate Fur Type Black Bear, a Chocolate Fur Type Fallow Deer, a 170 plus Axis Deer, and a Dark Fur Type Bantang. So that is going to be the goal. We'll be bouncing around to a bunch of different maps today and hopefully we can get them all done. After these missions, there's one more set of really tough objectives that, if all goes to plan, we'll be working on on stream tonight. So we'll see if we can get there, hopefully we can get them all done. And uh, starting out here on Red Feather, looking for Black Bear and Moose. I think Red Feather is the only map that still has two species we need for our objectives, so I thought it made sense to start out out here. And in one of the probably most predictable starts that doesn't involve getting one of the objectives done, we're over here calling in a Whitetail Buck because it had a max weight track and happened to grunt right when we fast traveled. So, not a bad deer, probably worth the time to try to get him. And at least we're not going to have to track him down. So, figured we'd take that. And we're kind of in moose territory, that's why I wanted to go with a crossbow. Anyway, I've often had a lot of luck going to this tent little island over here and a lot of times if you get up to this high point you can spot a lot of moose and I'm hoping that might allow us to get eyes on a light fur type one. I think that should be fairly easy to do. I can't think of a hunt in recent times when we've been looking for moose and haven't encountered one so hopefully that doesn't take very long and we can get on to the black bear but a 150 scoring buck with an almost 96 kg weight and now hopefully we get on to looking for the moose. And from one straight to the next Another pretty decent white tail buck, and this one, we're not even trying to call in, but I think for the sake of trying to speed things up, we'll just take that guy with the 30R. And I grabbed that mostly for Black Bear, because we don't have a barrel field or anything like that, and also because I'm thinking there's a fair chance we'll have to shoot a couple. I really can't tell the difference between a chocolate fur type and the common fur type, so I wanted something that could allow us to get two quick shots off and bring down bears that maybe we spook or something like that a little more quickly, but two nice bucks is never a bad thing. Would have been nice if we needed something mission objective wise for these, but liver and stomach on that 139 for him. At least it dropped him in his tracks using the 30R there. So much like in this scenario, we've spooked this bear. I'm not sure if it's the right fur type. Actually, it might very well be. And I wanted to be able to get two shots off. That second one may have been high, but the hope is with the 30R being fairly powerful and also having that capability that it should still go down. And it looked a little bit maybe to have a, a bit of a brownish tint compared to the normal common. And if so, at least we could have that out of the way. Still really no sign of any moose. There was one cow before we even found the white tail bucks, but it was just a common. And I decided to go ahead and just pass that. So I don't know if we end up getting the bear, it's going to kind of change things, because I had planned on going up into the swamp and looking for them that way, so maybe this will help us out. Although that's not a particularly good sound. I think... is that the same one? It might have been. If that's the case, it did still look to be a little bit more of a brown color to me. Maybe that's all it is, and I don't know how I would have never noticed that, but that is the chocolate fur type, so good deal on that. Got that one crossed off. And like I said, now I'm not sure. I'm almost tempted to just want to go straight to White Rhyme Ridge. There are just more moose out there, and it's a lot more wide open and easy to spot them. I think especially given the fact that we have given the 170 access to your own Bush Rangers run probably four attempts between the videos and the streams. Probably it's best to jump onto a map that's gonna give us better odds for the moose. So we'll head to White Rhyme and get suited up for that. I would call that the right decision. That is a light for type moose. We are literally right outside the starting lodge and you can see that kind of wider fur up around the shoulders and through to the neck and head but I mean literally we're right here. We haven't gone anywhere yet and we're not going to overcomplicate this. We'll make sure we get in plenty close to take it with the 340 and that'll be two of our five objectives already done and we're just about 40 minutes in so I'd say making better progress than our previous attempts at this. I'm going to call about 220 good, especially because she wants to walk into the trees. And we'll try to get a decent vital shot off here. Might have to actually go between the trees. 
that will work just fine though. And I'm sure it's fairly obvious in this particular case, I've talked about in mission videos specifically, oftentimes it can maybe be a bit misleading about how quickly we encounter animals because oftentimes I'll just pass things that clearly aren't going to complete the objective, but that really is the first moose we saw out here on White Rhyme. And certainly no complaints there, especially like I said, given the fact that we have to go back after an axis deer again, that we have quite a few hours chasing and absolutely no luck in getting. But at 5.07 in game, and classic time is two times faster than real time, so under four minutes, our light fur type moose is done. And I think we'll be on to Hirschfeld, and I feel like the fallow could be pretty quick. I've actually heard a lot of people struggling with the dark fur type Bantang. So hopefully the fallow goes quickly and we'll be down to those two that have caused, for us and for others, a fair bit of struggles. Now the last time we were out here on Hirschfeld and going after fallow deer, we had a borderline super rare with the two piebald fallow does in the same herd. So I wouldn't mind something like that, but just a chocolate fur type today would be enough to get us out of here. And ironically enough, we might have ourselves at least a bit of a similar situation to last time. No rares, but a bit of a necessity to try to take out this fallow buck silently. And that's why I grabbed the snake bite. Now there are the two does back there, and I'm not even sure that the female fallow can be the chocolate fur type. I think it's only bucks. But there was a second buck way off to the right over there and across the river that called as well, and I really don't want to end up spooking the does past there. So in an ideal world, we can just take both of them out with the snake bite as well. I've had some issues here and there making drop shots with it, and really making drop shots with any bow on the fallow, so we'll see how that goes. The other side of it is, they're no longer going to be attracted to the call. Because we killed this buck, they're just going to kind of wander around, but my guess is they're going to be kind of in this area and may end up just walking right into us. So we'll see what happens. I think for the moment we'll just kind of sit here and wait, because the buck on the other side at least should still be coming in. And as the does kind of move off, I think we'll at least get down here and grab the buck. And I'm not really sure, there's one actually coming in over there. So that is another doe. And actually that is the buck and that, I think, is the chocolate fur type. I want to wait till he gets out into the light, but I do believe that's what we're after. So we have the 6.5 blazer for that. I wanted to kind of cycle through to some other weapons and that's one of my favorite thing about doing missions. When there is no weapon requirement for them, it's really fun to cycle through and use things that we often don't use, but our bow fallow here, which we double lung, neck, liver, and intestine shot with a snake bite, that wasn't going anywhere. Not too bad, that was a part of a different mission, by the way, that we did an objective of there. And then I think we are all done with Hirschfelden in just over 10 minutes. And the odd thing was actually, I fast traveled to this tent to start with, no fallow calls, sat in the tree stand, called for a little bit, and got out of the stand. And it wasn't too long after crossing the river when we got the call from what I believe was the first buck that we shot, and then this guy called a little bit after that. But this was the Manil fur type for a while, in case there's any confusion there. That got changed because it really didn't make sense. Manil is more of a lighter coloration. So they changed the name of this one to Chocolate. And as long as I'm not misremembering or misunderstanding what happened, I think we are all set to head off, but you can see a much darker coloration on that guy. Got the chocolate fur type on the label there, 76 score, and I think we're going to be off to Pickabean Bay. I do look at that because it's an open map as maybe still a better option just to kind of run around and try to get Bantang along the river. I guess I should say there are open areas, specifically where the river's at. The map itself isn't all that open, but I want to go there, see if we can get the Bantang. And that leaves us with just that and the Axis Steer to go. So now is probably a pretty good time to mention that I'm not 100% sure what the Dark Fur Type Bantang even looks like. I could believe that this could be it out here, but I'm honestly not sure. There may be one that's a little bit darker, maybe one that doesn't have the, the white on the legs. I really don't know, but I think probably our best move is to take this one and find out. So. I had to go with the 4570 Buffalo today, one of my favorite weapons for big game and with the opportunity to take something like a Bantag, I figured we'd grab that. Now the angle is not the best, 
Really, the range isn't that great either, but I know this gun is capable at that range. Just need to get a shot lined up, and I don't think that one's going to be going too far. Well, I'm not too sure what happened here, but I can say that Bantang looks unharmed. I don't know if I misranged that, if that's even the same one. It looks to be, but it it's not kind of walking with it, its head held low or anything like that, which generally any of the big animals in Hunter Classic, their kind of wounded animation is having their head carried real low as they walk along. So I'm not sure on that. I don't know where we may have hit, but if it'll give us a bit of a broadside shot, which it is starting to do now, I certainly think we can get it at this range, and especially if it comes up out of the water, That'll do a little bit better. I'm really intrigued to see if we have a first impact. I also didn't see, and, and that one shows up very well. I didn't see any wound on it, as if we would have missed. So, I'm not sure. I marked roughly where I thought it was standing to help with tracking it down. And, uh, we can check. We can see if there's more blood, if this is only one hit. Or, I guess if it ends up completing the objective, we don't have to worry about it. But, I'm gonna assume based on the location of these tracks, this would be the one that we shot at, and it looks like it would be the same one. Now, there is one other trail here that is just a normal track. We've got fleeing track there, and whenever this would be, that's a rooster deer, so it's got to be the same one. I have no idea what went wrong. One shot, but that says common. Now, I don't know. They may all say common, I guess not completing the objective for that. So hopefully we can find whatever we need to get for that. Like I said, I'm not 100% sure what we're looking for, but at least we know it's not that. Now I'm really confused. I think that's probably the same fur type, but it could be a little bit darker. Again, with the rain being darn near non-stop out here, it's kind of tough to tell at that distance, but we're really not far from where we shot at the other one where I'm not sure if we did hit it didn't hit it or what actually happened basically went for a detour off to our left went and walked around the couple of little lakes or ponds out here and you can see we're more or less back where that all started and I'm intrigued to see if this ends up having one shot or two because I could believe if it ended up being the same one that somehow managed to escape but we'll go and see I can't tell if that is any darker than the first but can't pass it up when the opportunity's there. You know, that may be a little bit darker. I still don't see a second bullet wound, so I'm not sure about that. We actually hard shot it, and that is a dark fur type Bantang. Not bad. That, for that mission, does actually complete it, and it will give us access to the next mission with all the difficult objectives, but I do want to get the access to out of the way. And I'll check and see, I don't think any of those objectives could be done on Bush Ranger's run anyway. But good deal, that was a little over 30 minutes, a couple of Bandang down, and we're off to Bush Ranger's run. Well, the good news is, so far, it's been relatively easy to actually encounter Axis Deer. The bad news is, we are nowhere near 170 inches of antler on something like that. But we'll go ahead and take it with the 7x64. I at least want to shoot some Axis Deer when they're around. I think maybe that could help us out, depending on how long this hunt actually goes. By taking out some bucks, at least we're not going to run into their tracks, get a call from them or anything, and get slowed down a little bit later. And I would like to think, because Bush Ranger's Run actually is an open map, unlike most of Pikmin Bay, if we do spook some by taking a shot, in theory we can catch them running off and at least know whether we want to go after them or not. I think a 170 plus would be fairly obvious, so if we would see that, we'd know what to go and try to track it down. But this guy, he'll be lucky if he's 70 plus. I don't think he really would be. Double lung lever, 52 score. And hopefully it's only up from here in terms of the antler size of the other bucks out here. Well, that certainly is an improvement, but 75 to 160 and still well short of the 170 objective. Probably going to be in the area of 140 or so. But I was getting ready to fast travel anyway. So as he's taking a step, we'll take that shot with the 7x64, and we'll probably go ahead and do that fast travel. Good to see one with at least forks, but 
still gonna need quite a bit more to uh, top 170. Actually a solid weight on that guy of 106.8 kg. 136 score though needs quite a bit to uh, reach our goal, but I wanted to hop over to this tent. I'll often get access in this area, even with the feral hog calling. We may have some around, we'll just have to take a moment to do a bit of glassing. And then what I want to do is head over towards the river. A lot of times, especially later in a hunt, animals use this crossing and you just end up with a bunch of stuff kind of down in that area. So that's where I want to go. And if we can't spot an axis deer over 170 from one of these high points, hopefully there can be one down around there. I cannot believe what we're looking at. It's not big, but there's a melanistic axis deer buck right back in here. Of course it's a spike, but he just called. He must have gotten himself kind of wedged in that area. And by pure luck, we actually haven't spooked him. So we're going to try to stick him with an arrow if we can. I'd like to get him with the bow. Maybe we can just kind of call him back this way a little bit. Although... This may be problematic. There is a whole lot going on, including an access to your doe trying to come in. So we'll start scooting this way. If we can get him with the bow, we will. Worst case scenario, we got to get him with the gun. But I don't like how quickly that doe is trying to come in. I think we're still going to get our shot. I don't know how close the doe is, so we're going to try to go for it before anything happens. That is so cool to see coming in. I really never thought we'd get any chance at a rare axis deer. We just don't hunt bushrangers run that often. That is really, really cool. There's actually a doe coming in behind him. Maybe a part of the same herd. There could be other ones around. And you can get herds with multiple bucks, so I guess we'll take this slow back to using the silence of the snake bite to our advantage. And who knows, in case there is another one coming from another direction, we'll try to drop her as well. And I don't know, do, do we check around, make sure there's not a really big buck somewhere that would technically qualify this as a super rare? Might be worth looking. If there is, I'm not seeing it. By the way, we have the piebald black feral goat, but got one down here that would complete that objective had we not gotten it on stream. I'm not sure, I probably should have clarified as well. From the end of the last video, if you didn't catch the stream, we got a fair few of the objectives done on that including getting the Blackford type feral hog, which was quite nice, getting that out of the way after a lot of struggles. But we're going to get the doe first to clean up the trophy shot and not have that laying back there. And for our melanistic axis to your buck, probably 50-something score again. Neck, lung, liver, and stomach, 46 score. But it is a rare, and that is, I think, something we're going to have to taxonomize. Like I said, not something we see very often at all. And we'll try to line up some kind of cool picture up here on this little high point. And I tried a whole bunch of different things, and I just like how this comes out with the axis deer laying down in front of us. So, pretty cool trophy shot. Something for the Rares Lodge. And I think probably what we'll do is work our way to that river crossing still. We're over the three hour mark into this hunt. And if we can't manage 170 by heading over there, I'll probably try to come back a little bit later on today and give it a shot again. But I am super stoked with that melanistic. Like I said, I didn't think we'd ever get a rare access deer given the limited amount of time we spend on Bush Rangers Run, but enough of a reason to come here for the mission and we stumble into something I'd say a heck of a lot cooler than a 170. Just as expected, there are some access deer down here on the crossing and I mean that one I think is going to be bigger than our 136 or whatever it was, but that's still not a 170 I don't think, so we'll go ahead and take that shot. On the off chance that there is maybe another one still up there not a render, I figure we'll try to go for it from here. And if we get lucky, we might get one more after this still in this hunt, but still pretty cool we got the Melanistic. That's definitely the thing that is going to be the best trophy, even if we get a 170 here. And I'm not sure where that shot hit, but enough to bring him down fairly quick. No sign of anything else up along here. And unless there would maybe be one over on that side, which at least at first glance, I'm not seeing. Probably for this session, this guy will be our last kill, but I think he is going to be our highest scoring axis of the day. 99.6 kg and a 139 score, so bigger than the last, though just barely. And like I said, I'll try to come back out here a little bit later on today and see if I can manage to stumble into one. 
a really solid hunt on Bush Rangers, and the fact that we got the other objectives done is really encouraging, but I really want to have all that out of the way so we can work on the tougher missions on Strength of Night, so fingers crossed we can do it. I don't know what is going on. We've now got a piebald axis deer doe coming in. I kind of underestimated how busy I was going to be today, and this is probably nearly 12 hours since finishing the last hunt. And literally the first axis deer we're looking at is a piebald doe. And I mean, we're kind of in a situation again where we can at least attempt to take it with the bow. We do have this buck coming in, which of course is nowhere near 170. And we have another doe up the hill a bit farther, but I think we're going to go ahead and try to take this shot now before anything gets any closer. It should be maybe high 20s for the yards, if that. As long as we can just drop that right in there. The buck doesn't even know anything happened. And I suppose we might as well go ahead and try to take him as well. I'd love to know what the odds of having two rares in back-to-back -back hunts would be compared to the odds of just finding one 170. Especially over the course of, I'm going to say six hunts now, if I've counted that correctly. Surely we are looking at something that is far more rare, but yet this is what we've seen. And I don't know that we've even gotten an access to your maybe over 150. I think on the stream we might have had a 140 plus. But again, because we haven't spooked anything, might as well try to take this doe with the snake bite as well. And then if there are any other access to your in the area, hopefully we won't end up spooking them. So one last good shot, hopefully. And we've got another trophy shot to attempt to take down here with our doe. Again, I really never thought we'd end up with any rare axes, let alone two in one day, and even further, let alone two in back-to-back -back hunts, but again with the next shot. This one obviously with the piebald, and I don't know, do we tax that as well? I guess it can't hurt. So kind of going for a similar idea here with the trophy shot, but a pretty good start to this hunt. We also have a feral goat that's decided to come and pay us a visit, so... God, I don't know if I've ever shot one at that range, but I forgot they kind of did that with this map. The the kangaroos actually have a, a bit of a noise as well when you shoot them with a bow. And we actually spooked another access to your doe that was coming in. Lots of stuff all up in this one area, but nothing to complete our objective. We still ended up getting four kills with the bow, including our first access to your buck of this hunt, an 86 score, also with an 86 kilogram weight, interestingly enough. But one more doe and then we will head off. I still, I don't know what the odds are that something like that would happen today. And hopefully we can just top off a ridiculous time on Bush Rangers by getting that last objective. I do believe that guy is going to make it with probably in the area of 30 inches to spare. That may be the biggest axis deer I've seen so far. Our biggest one ever is a 203, and that is way wider than that 203. Now, I'm not 100% sure that it's got the same general frame otherwise, but I'm kind of thinking that may go over 200, which I think the craziest part of that is the fact that I almost just made a mistake and shot a 150-ish axis tier just a moment ago. It was probably within render of this, and it was just going to be because it was a decent access deer and something to maybe take out. Just over that way somewhere, I spotted that and just decided to pass it up, especially given the fact that we've shot the two rares and I know we had the other two white tail bucks, so there's been a fair few non-objective completing animals already today, so pass that up, come over here, and I don't think there's any doubt that one is going to be way over 170. That said, I do want to know just how much over, but look at the size of the frame on that guy. He looks absolutely perfect. I don't see any potential deduction, so let's see. He is 107 kg and a 202.2. Interestingly enough, he ends up not being our biggest one, but I'm going to say our coolest one. I think we're going to tax that too. What a cool looking axis deer. And... That does it for that mission. It's so interesting that it worked out like that. A really, really tough time finding one that would even go over 150, really, let alone 170, and then a 200 to round it all out. We had, I don't know what the total would have been, 20 objectives probably, 
And there were some decent kills in there. We had the 180 Whitetail. I want to say a couple of the Hogs that we got were in the mid 900s. But this one is probably our best so far. And the two non-objective rares are right up there too. That is pretty darn cool. I can't believe we actually got this done. It is 12.22 a.m. on Wednesday. Of course, I usually record these videos the day before they go up. I'm going to say I started recording at... 10 or 11 a.m. Tuesday. Now, this wasn't like a 12-hour recording session or anything. A lot of time in between. As I said, I kind of underestimated the amount of things that I'd have to do today before getting back to working on this mission. But we finally have it done, and we'll be able to activate the mission with all the really tough objectives for tonight's stream. So on that note, that is going to do it for this video. So thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you over on Twitch tonight.